So hypothetically, can a planet spin so fast that it rips itself apart? And well, according to one of the recent studies, the answer is quite possible. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a really interesting discovery of three brown dwarfs, or three really massive planets, that spin so fast that they're practically at the limit right before they fall apart. Something that naturally really surprised the scientists. But first of all, let's start with what's a brown dwarf? And there's actually one right there. Let's go and explore it. So a brown dwarf is what we would call a failed star. It's an object that's not really a star in terms of mass, and it doesn't really have an ability to fuse hydrogen, but it's really massive to be a typical planet. As a matter of fact, unlike planets, they start acquiring their own properties. So for example, the more massive the brown dwarf, the smaller it gets in size. This here is a lot less massive than this one right here. And as they get more massive, they start acquiring properties where they even start fusing certain materials. At first, the brown dwarf starts fusing deuterium and starts to produce a little bit more energy and more heat, and later on, it even starts fusing lithium, which produces even more heat. But in order to become a star, a typical brown dwarf needs to acquire about 80 to 90 masses of the sun. And that's essentially when the brown dwarf sort of changes completely, the layers on the inside shift, and it starts fusing hydrogen, producing a lot of energy. But prior to about 13 masses of Jupiter, it's still considered to be a planet because it doesn't have a lot of these features. In other words, anything below 13 masses of Jupiter is still basically a gas giant. It's a Jupiter-like object. Some of the first discoveries of brown dwarfs came from this beautiful telescope known as WISE that operated around a decade ago. This is the so-called Whitefield Infrared Survey Explorer that made a lot of really exciting discoveries, including this right here, the most famous brown dwarf known as Loman 16. This is a binary object and is also the closest brown dwarf to us. And because this system are the closest brown dwarfs to us, it's been investigated and studied by various scientists, and one of the previous videos um, does actually explore this in more detail because we found some really incredible things about them. And in case you were wondering, this is how close they are to our solar system with the next closest brown dwarf being right here, slightly farther away. But in the last few years, scientists have been discovering more and more of brown dwarfs, and a lot of them are really weird, really, really strange. Mostly because, as I mentioned before, they're not really planets and not really stars, they do possess a lot of their own features, but also because they are so numerous, there are so many of them out there. And because there are so many out there that have been already discovered, there are obviously some really interesting record holders as well. The smallest, the biggest, the closest, the most distant, and a lot of other records. But the one record that's particularly interesting to us, especially when it comes to the formation of planets, are the brown dwarfs that spin the fastest. Mostly because we would really like to understand one day how fast planetary objects can spin, and also what effects this might have on the object itself and some of the objects nearby. Although in this particular case, this is a simulation, so nothing really spins that fast. But as the recent paper that you can find in the description below discovered, there are at least three objects out there, three brown dwarfs out there, that spin so fast that if they were spinning just a little bit faster, they would most likely start losing chunks of the matter from the surface. So basically they are spinning almost at the limit of how fast a planetary object can spin. But how fast is fast? Well, here's a comparison with planet Earth and with the fastest spinning planet in the solar system, Jupiter. As you might know already, Jupiter makes a single spin around its axis every 10 hours. And that's really fast for the solar system. Naturally, Earth takes 24 hours. But one of these beautiful giants, one of these brown dwarfs discovered, with the average mass of approximately 43 masses of Jupiter, only takes just a little bit longer than an hour to go around its axis. And that's absolutely mind-blowing which also probably creates some ridiculous effects on the equator. Now, first of all, because of the centrifugal forces here, it's very likely that the object probably looks something like this. Very disc-like. And because of these ridiculous speeds, it's also very likely that the brown dwarf itself, especially if we look at it from the top here, might constantly lose a lot of matter to the outside. Now, it's not really clear what happens to this matter as it sort of escapes and as it starts spewing out from the sides here, but it very likely comes back to the planet, to the brown dwarf, and possibly deposits in the polar regions or somewhere else where the spin is not as high. 
So for all we know, it might resemble something like this, although that's just a speculation. Basically here, if the matter does actually leave the surface of the planet, it will probably get deposited in some of the other regions of the brown dwarf. But before we go on, let's make this object look a little bit more realistic. Now remember, these objects don't just spin rapidly, they're also very, very massive. This one here is over 40 masses of Jupiter, which means that it can easily maintain its shape. It can maintain its spherical shape a lot more efficiently than other planets. And because of this, its actual ablateness is not as extreme as I made it seem, with the predicted value for how ablate this object is being around 0.08, or about 8% as squished as a typical sphere. So from a distance, it's still going to kind of resemble a sphere, but I figured just for the artistic reasons, it's still more fun to keep it squished just so that you can remember how fast it really spins. And so the mass of this object can easily maintain its spherical shape. It's even less oblate than Saturn, which spins much slower but has much lower mass. But naturally, because it spins so fast, it also probably has extremely powerful magnetospheres. That's one of the potential effects that all of this generates. And since we know that Jupiter already has the most powerful magnetosphere of all the planets in the solar system, magnetosphere that's formed by the metallic hydrogen on the inside that's also generated through the relatively fast rotation of the planet, by having such a ridiculously powerful rotation in these brown dwarfs, the magnetosphere is probably so much stronger. And what potential effects this generates around these brown dwarfs is actually not something we can currently answer. But one potential effect that we can definitely detect in the future are very powerful aurora. Probably even some of the most powerful aurora we've ever seen. And since the nearest of these objects is only about 29 light years away from us, this presents the scientists with an excellent opportunity to study what happens around these extreme objects with extremely powerful magnetospheres. And in case you were wondering how fast you'd be moving if you were to somehow find yourself on the equator of this object, well basically by standing right here you would be spinning around 110 kilometers per second, plus minus a few kilometers. And that's really, really fast. That's way faster than, well, actually way faster than anything we have in the solar system for sure. And also generally about 10 times faster than a typical brown dwarf. Which of course means that these objects are some of the most extreme objects in the galaxy. But considering how dim these objects are, and also considering the distances here, how could the scientists possibly know the rotation of these brown dwarfs? And to identify the rotation, the scientists use a really interesting and somewhat brilliant technique. And here's how they reasoned. We understand that pretty much all gas giants have all kinds of weather storms on the surface. The most famous, of course, being the Great Red Spot right here. And generally, these large weather storms will probably produce slightly different visible wavelengths as the light from the planet, or from a brown dwarf in this case, is emitted over a certain period. So, for example, if we were to look at Jupiter, we would most likely see most of Jupiter look like this, and then once in a while, every 10 hours, we would suddenly see this unusual dip of light because of the great red spot. This would happen quite regularly, and this would be very visible even from faraway distances. By using this technique, we can then kind of establish that it's very likely that all of this is due to the rotation of the planet, and it means that the planet spins every 10 hours. And so very similarly, the scientists studying these brown dwarfs identified the patterns that were repeating pretty much every single hour, something that became more and more obvious as they started to analyze the data. And since nothing can really spin around a brown dwarf that fast, the only other explanation is that it was the brown dwarf itself spinning every hour. But although most stars, planets, and brown dwarfs discovered so far usually have the spin around um, 10 hours, which is very similar to Jupiter, these three objects were unique, and they were very, very unusual. By the way, on the opposite side of this extreme is actually our Sun, the most important object in our solar system. And unlike other stars, our Sun spins really slow, and also because of this is one of the mildest stars out there. And this is, of course, one of the main reasons life was able to evolve on our planet, and very likely will have difficulty evolving in some of the other star systems. A single rotation of the Sun takes roughly around 27 days. Although to be more exact, it actually varies depending on where you're looking. If you were to look at the equatorial regions, the rotation here would be around 25 days, whereas in the polar regions, the rotation is closer to about 35 days. And just to confirm that this was actually the spin of the object and not really something spinning around the object, 
The scientists also were able to see the blue shift of the site coming toward us and the red shift of the site coming away from us, suggesting that what they were observing were the Doppler effects from all of the light coming from these three brown dwarfs. And so there is very little doubt that what the scientists discovered were indeed some of the fastest spinning objects in the galaxy. But now the next questions are going to be in regards to trying to analyze what happens around these brown dwarfs. With the obvious questions being in regards to the magnetosphere, the potential effects on planets orbiting around these brown dwarfs, and maybe even some other mysterious effects we can't even imagine just yet. But a lot of them are probably going to be in regards to the magnetosphere, or possibly even some of the gas escaping this object as it spins really, really fast. And so, either way, it's an exciting discovery, and we're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this as the scientists discover more about these really strange, really peculiar objects. But considering how many brown dwarfs are out there, and considering that our techniques of discovering new things about them have been improving over the last few years, chances are we're going to find even more strange objects out there in the next few years. So make sure to subscribe because there are going to be so many other videos coming about these peculiar and somewhat difficult to understand objects. But on that note, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Either way, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye. Oh, another thing we need is a really cool name for these objects. Right now their name is somewhat challenging. For all three objects, it's basically something like this. And so if you have a really cool name or a cool idea for these objects, post it in the comments below. As long as that idea is not like brown like spinny face or something, because that just doesn't sound right. Anyway, bye bye.